Hello there and welcome to The Ripple Effect. I'm Jessica Osbrook along with Kim Graves from Solidarity Community Federal Hello, Credit everyone. Union. Hello everyone. And today we have Lisa. Lisa is going to join us and she is with 4C, which is very interesting. Um, it's basically, you can give us the details and the history background on 4C, but it has a lot to do with mental health and your, just your well-being in general. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we are 4C Health. We were previously... Uh, Four County Comprehensive Mental Health Center is how we started. Then we became Four County Counseling Center. Then we became Four County. Um, and that was because we served actually four counties when we started. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah makes, makes total sense. Yeah. So uh, we served Miami, Cass, uh, Fulton, and Pulaski for you know, probably around 40 years. And then we really started to expand. Mental health needs were out there uh, as well as substance use needs. And so we really started a major expansion at that point. Some, and, something I think is really interesting. Yeah. You've talked about all the changes you've made over the years, right. the evolution of mental health care, and yeah. you guys have evolved, which I think is extra yeah. special. Oh, yeah. We've definitely evolved. We have um, around 425 employees now wow. across 14 wow. counties. Big yeah. program. Yeah, big program. Um, and we serve the entire lifespan. And one of our biggest missions has been um, access in, in any way. And so that's really what's caused that expansion as we really wanted to be in these rural areas where access is limited. And we wanted to be there at the time that, you know, somebody needed that mental health or substance use mm -hmm. support. Mm -hmm. Do you, and I know you guys have been in business 17 years, actually oh, no, 50, longer, 50, 50 years, years, but 50. I've seven, been there 17. You've been there 17 years. Okay. It was, so my, um, have you noticed that either prior to COVID or after COVID, which have you noticed it being more of an impact yeah. either prior or after? Probably after, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, suicide rates have increased over the past right. few years, unfortunately. And so that's really um, been a, that's been a, one of our steps is, you know, okay, well, we've got to have these crisis services available right. and that needs to be walk-in crisis. Or if somebody just needs to be in one of our crisis stabilization units voluntarily to get that support, but not actually be inpatient. Um, and then our mobile crisis teams are huge oh, in great. our county. So, um, you know, if someone calls 911 and it's a mental health or substance use concern, we actually have a team that goes out in the community and responds uh, to that individual. That's what I was going to ask yeah. if it's a 24 hour or 24 no, seven. if you decide anything's going on with you, you can only call between nine and five. No. You definitely. Yeah, you don't yeah. want that. No, yeah. no, no. And that's been, you know, such a huge thing for us is just having, you know, that access point wherever we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Emergency rooms. And so you have a team that will actually go out and and assist with whatever the situation may be. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think that's awesome to have a mobile unit yep. that will come to you in a time of crisis. Now, does the police department in mm -hmm. these or the sheriff's department come alongside of you yeah, in these counties so too? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's basically a partnership between law enforcement and ourselves. And so, you know, law enforcement, they have a place in all of this, right? And so right. They're, they're looking for safety of the individual, but there comes a point where they just they don't feel equipped mm -hmm. to be right. able to and they're not that issue. and they shouldn't have and to and they be. shouldn't have right. to they're be. not mental no, health care providers no that's no not, and, they, yeah, and right. that's that's great so they will you know make sure they've done what they need to do at that scene and then they can move on mm -hmm. with what is happening and we can then just address that crisis in front of us now you wow. said you serve all spectrum of ages mm -hmm. and when we're talking about younger children what kind of services do you offer there so um, we also work with like um, Department of Child Services, right? So there may be some parenting involved when it's an infant or a, you know, a young toddler. We are in Head Start programs. So a lot, a lot of times that's also in the parenting aspect, but also working mm -hmm. you know, with some behavior management with those, um, those yo that younger population. And then we're, you know, all the way through with our youth, adolescent, teenager, and then in adulthood, we serve um, about 44% of who we serve is between ages um, 22 and, or 25 and 64. So that's, that's our biggest. Wow. That's that pretty, I mean, that's yeah, yeah. pretty wide. It's not like they're in their forties or their thirties. Yep. You have a yeah. broad range. Yeah. So if I want to find out more information mm -hmm. besides picking up the phone and calling, what is, do you have a website? Yeah, of course. So it's 4chealthin.org. Um, on there, it has everything that we offer, it has all of our locations. It has, um, we have a chat now feature. So if somebody jumps oh, on there and oh, says, yeah. I just need to know, like, how do, how do I start services? Mm -hmm. 
Um, they can also they can start a you know a new patient packet right there, and and we'll call them and get them going. You know, we talked a little bit about suicide and that those rates have been going up. And I imagine especially in younger people, but not just younger people, adults as well. And right. I think when it comes to younger people, I'm not sure as parents that we are quite equipped to walk our kids through this. Thing. Yeah. Well, how many parents may not even be aware That's of right. the situation? That is right. right. You know? Yeah, it's tough with, with social media, cell phones, mm -hmm. all of that. It's, it, is, it is harder for parents, you know, to identify right. that. Um, and that's why one of our focuses is also educating the community. We have a mental health awareness training grant. Um, and so right now we are able to go across all of our catchment area and train for free in mental health first aid ah. and QPR, which is suicide prevention training. Wow. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So we're I trying mean, to push that out everywhere mm -hmm. because it at least gives, you know, a set of tools that can be used for somebody in the general public to be able to know, okay, what, at what point do I refer and how do I do that? Do you think the su the suicide rate is higher than what it's ever been? I mean, um, or what's yeah. your what's your take on that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I do think COVID has had an I impact too. on that. Mm -hmm. I think for youth, it's uh, you know resilience has just been difficult. It's they, hard. They're kind of their whole life kind of stopped, right? And right, they're they're how they interacted, how they had conflict, mm -hmm. you know, and so um, and so they you know found that they would find maybe some trust in, uh, you know, texting and having mm -hmm. conversation that way, or maybe social media outlets and things like that. I saw something, actually, I had a therapist that told me one time, if you mm -hmm. want to have a conversation, especially with a teenager, and you're not sure it's going to be an easy one, get in the car. <laughs> Get in the car, yeah. and take a drive. Yep. You don't have to look at each other. You can yep. just have conversations. <laughs> and yeah. they can't go anywhere. That's they right. can't walk yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And I think that's hard for parents too, because we are, you know, our generation, we tend to be a little probably more direct, mm -hmm. right? Than right. just we open up those conversations and have them and and um you, you have to approach in a different manner well, with that. This. And so you're not mm -mm. always sure how to dissect the feelings and why um, you feel the way yeah, you feel. Right. Right. Well, and that's why if you if you're a parent and you don't feel like you have that you know, that means to do that, then that's why we exist. Yep. Right. So, um, you know, parents can reach out, we can help facilitate those conversations. We can help do <sighs> things. I know when I speak with my nieces and nephews, I'm like, please put your phone down. Let's look at each other. <laughs> yep. Let's have direct eye contact. And they're like this on their phone. And I'm like, please, please, please. So now when it comes to cost, is that a barrier for folks who might be lower income? Um, it could be. We serve, so our, we serve the underserved, right? And so the most um, uh, payer that we serve is Medicaid and HIP. And um, we're a community mental health center. And so that's that's what we do. And a lot of those folks don't have a ton of options. There's not right. a lot of providers right. that accept Medicaid, HIP. Mm -hmm. And so um, if they don't have that coverage, we help with that. So Good. if they if they come in and they don't have um, the insurance that they need, we have a benefits navigator that will jump in there, help them with those things. We have some financial assistance options right. as well. And so we really, you know, turn over every rock to make sure they get care. I was going to say, because I mean, if I came in and I needed help and I didn't have that, I want to know that somebody yeah. will help me get mm -hmm. through this time. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. We talk oh. about mental health. I want to talk about the stigma a little bit. Yeah, you mentioned that there will there's a new facility in Miami County that mm -hmm. you have. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so currently our inpatient unit is in Logansport. It's a 15 bed adult unit, um, but we have a new location in Peru. So the location in Peru was our outpatient clinic. Um, however, we now have renovated the entire other side of the building, and that will become our new inpatient unit. So still 15 bed. However, we will be adding youth and adolescent inpatient care, awesome. as well as a crisis stabilization unit for yeah. youth as well. You know, we were talking mm -hmm. earlier about the stigma of inpatient care when it comes to mm -hmm. mental health, and it's... It's not like you see on TV, no, right? No. It's not like the white jackets. It's right. no, yeah. yeah, no. And and we have, um, you know, we've had posts where you you can see the inpatient unit from our ribbon cutting event that we held in May, um, and I mean it's beautiful, it's relaxing, it's it's clean, it's nice, it's it's not at all what you would think. Well, and the world has changed so much yeah. in the past five years, right. in the past 20 years, for sure. We have so many more things pulling our attention, so many more scary and bad yeah. things happening around our world too that you know people just sometimes don't know where to go. No, they don't. And that's, that's again, why we try to put those access points everywhere because 
the the days of someone just walking into a mental health mm-hmm. clinic and saying, I need help, right. you know, that's just so minimal now yep. that someone's going to take that step. In that but place. somebody just may want that tranquility mm-hmm. and they want somebody yeah. to speak with yeah. and they need that balance and you guys are there for them. Yeah, absolutely. Or maybe they don't feel safe at home. You yeah, know, could be. Yep. Yeah. And like we talked about the stigma, stigma, stigma when it comes to mental health. But, you know, the inpatient facilities are a safe place for folks who are struggling. There's no shame. Right. And realizing, hey, I've got some issues going on and yeah. I need to figure out how to solve them. Yeah. And just because you come doesn't mean that you even meet criteria to go inpatient, right? And so if you don't, that's okay. We've got other avenues we can take to still get you that support. Now, wow. we've talked a lot about mental health. Can we touch on the other services that you provide? Yeah, absolutely. So kind of holistic, um, though. I, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it includes everything. Uh, so we can talk with substance <laughs> use, right? So uh, we, we offer uh, substance use services in the outpatient realm. Um, we have medically assisted treatment as well. Um, one of our big uh, expansions over the past couple of years has been our, our peer supports in the community. So we really? peer recovery specialists. And those are individuals that are in recovery themselves. So they've walked that walk. um, And really their biggest uh, goal is to outreach as many folks as possible and get them into recovery. And so that relationship between a peer and someone that is headed towards recovery, I I mean, it's something that you've never seen. And there's lots of different Mm. organizations seem to be partnering up, especially when it comes to substance abuse. Yeah. Well, you have to. It takes a community, Mm -hmm. you know, to be able to provide that that support to those folks, they have to feel like they're in an environment where they can really be in recovery and you know not have those temptations to, to use again. Do you have a lot more walk-ins than you do um, referrals or, I mean, it just, is it about the same? Um, it's, it's probably about the same. I would say, so we get referrals from primary care doctors. We okay. get referrals from our criminal justice probation, jail, um, from a lot of our schools. Like I said, we were in 43 school corporations. So that, you know, um, is a huge one for us. We have some, some companies that we have close partnerships with. So Uh we get referrals from there. And then we do, we get people that call, we get people that walk in, we have, um, walk in access from 9am to 3pm in all of our outpatient clinics. So if I woke up one day and said, I think I need to go get some services, right. I can walk in and I can get going that day. That's great. I mean, you just don't know. No. Things can happen. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, me and you could be talking right now. Mm-hmm. And then later on, I could say, Jessica, I need help. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Just- Absolutely. And inpatient services, we talked a little bit. Um, what about Medicare? I think you mentioned that earlier. Yeah, we serve Medicare population mm-hmm. as well. Um, like I said, we do the whole lifespan. Uh, and so uh, while it's not our, our, um, you know, I said 44%, right? We're between age 25 to 64, but we have, you know, a lot of clients after the age of 64 that definitely still need that mental health support. Wow. That's an, it's an amazing service that you all offer. And honestly, I wasn't familiar with it. So this has definitely enlightened me mm-hmm. to say, hey, if someone needs assistance, then I can definitely yeah. refer them your way or have them reach out to you and yeah. just talk to someone. Yep, absolutely. We also started offering primary care. So <gasps> how nice. That's another entry point, uh, right? So, yeah, <laughs> it definitely yeah. is. Yeah, so, we, so we've started primary care. It's in our Logansport Clinic now, soon to be in Peru, Rochester, We'll be in Kokomo mm-hmm. um, at some point. And so um, that's really exciting too, because sometimes, you know, folks need primary care and then we identify maybe they need more, but maybe they don't. Right. Mm-hmm. We've been talking a lot about one end of mental health when it comes to the conversation we've had today, but mental health comes in all forms. Maybe there's someone who's just struggling a little bit, you know, right. they can't seem to get out of the dark. Do you offer referrals for therapists, that kind of thing? Yeah. So we actually are one of eight um, agencies across the state that were awarded CCBHC, which is Certified Community Behavioral Health Care. Um, so we are a demonstration site. And so really the trajectory of community mental health is changing to this model. And so we are one of the, the pioneers for this, That's which awesome. is super exciting. <laughs> but a big, big part of CCBHC model is coordination. And so we have to be great at coordination, not just internally with one another, but externally, primary care, family, um, any specialty care that they may have, any other you know services. Somebody may have therapy with us and get medication somewhere else. And so we uh, already focus on uh, 
on coordination and collaboration, but we've got to, we, we really are, we'll get to the point where we are uh, much more heavy in that area. Oh my gosh. Busy, busy. I know. And there, <laughs> I had no idea, <laughs> but I think it's awesome. Yeah. You know, I just think it's amazing that we have this service out there mm -hmm. and like myself was not aware. And I think mm -hmm. there's so many more people that need to know yeah. we can help. Yeah. And don't don't take it all up on your shoulders. No. You know, let someone else step in yeah. and help you through this We're process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a mental health provider, we've worked really, really hard over, you know, more years than I like to admit sometimes, but we've worked really hard to reduce that stigma so people didn't feel right. like they had right. to take all that on themselves. Life is tough. Sometimes situational things happen. Sometimes uh, when you have a diagnosis, that's just going to be there and you need help managing it. And right. So that's, that's what we're there for. Now, you are a not-for-profit organization. Do you take funds? Do you take donations? Is that something that no, folks can do to we help? we are self-supporting. Okay. So, no, we don't do donations. Um, we, we try to actually do as much as we can for the community. So mm -hmm. that's why we... Um, like I talked about the mental health awareness training grant so we can go out and train folks. Right. Um, we are often um, seeking grants so that we can continue to expand and, mm -hmm. and um, get out in the community more and more. That sounds great. Now, is there anything it. else you'd like folks to know about 4C? Um, no, just that, you know, we continue to grow. We continue to expand. Um, and that access is really key. And I, we've talked about access a hundred times over on this, mm -hmm. in this conversation, right? But um, access can be in the form of a call, yep. a walk-in, you know, calling our mobile crisis teams, uh, getting that crisis stabilization care. And once you access us, we want to be able to keep, keep you engaged uh, until, you, until you don't need us anymore. I'm so thankful for your program. I just think it's an amazing service that you're offering to all these other, I mean, to every community that's yeah. nearby. Well, and, and mental health knows no socioeconomic you're right. background. You're right. It knows nothing. No. It just... Mm -hmm is with everybody. Yeah, it right. does not discriminate. No, it does not. Wow. That's very well put. Mm -hmm. Now, Lisa, if we need to get a hold of you at 4C, mm -hmm. what's the best way to reach out? So we have our website, which is 4chealthin.org. Um, that has, you know, our crisis number on there. There's a chat now feature, so folks can get on there and, and start chatting about services. You can refer yourself as well. Um, we have a crisis number, which is 1-800-552-3106. 24 um, seven, it will go, you know, if you call at midnight, it's going to go to our inpatient unit and they will help. And that's on the website too, that phone yep, number too. Yep, okay. That number mm -hmm. is there. Need that too. Um, there's also a tab on there that lists all of our services in detail. So someone can get on there. If, if there, we have group home care, for example, we have, you know, inpatient, we have primary care, we have um, assertive uh, or yeah, assertive intensive services, which is for adults. So we've got a whole list of services and so right. really the sky's the limit. So if yeah. people are curious, jump on there and, and check it out. And if not, they'll call you and you'll, and you'll send them, them in the right direction. Yep, we, will. You know? we will. We mm will. -hmm. Yeah. We will. Our access oh my gosh. is great with that. Lisa, That's awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today from 4C. Thank you for C. having me. Thank you so much. This was so exciting. It really was. Check yeah. out their website. One more time, Lisa, how do we find you? 4chealthin.org. 4chealthin.org. I'm Jessica. This is Kim. We're from Solidarity Community Federal Credit Union, and we sure appreciate you watching the ripple effect today. Have a great day.